Yeah. Yeah, that field is really nice. Yeah. And if you live in those apartments there, that's kind of where used to be. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. Okay. So she used to be in the movie she's over there. Yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. Like, I would like that. I was yeah. like, like retired. Yeah. yeah. I'm just sit on my porch and watch high school sports every day. And eventually they're building some. Right now it's a giant dirt mountain on the other side, like between the, the school and that building. So I put in, I think they're putting a turf field hockey field in there. Oh, there's more sports. So that's what we don't have as well. I had not existed though. Like, it's a nice one. When my friend used to rip it, he's like, he just blows with some points. Nobody knows the rules, and nobody ever asked. I don't get that. Yeah. I do like that girl's across, and nobody knows what's happening. Yeah, that's the Lord. Like, she just listens to the Lord. I want you to watch my own play. And every face off, they had to like redo it like three times. Like, you did not. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like. Yeah, it's like. Yeah, it's like. Yeah, it's like. Oh, it's not on the yeah. No, no, it doesn't. Actually, you don't want to move. Actually, start like. Number two, church. Number two. And if it doesn't go, if it doesn't go straight up, it doesn't count. My number three, check check one two, one two, viewer, check check one two, viewer. Siblings, siblings, my number four, check check siblings, one two three, siblings. My number five, my number five, check check one two, one two three, my five. Mike yeah. number six, check check one two, Mike two, Mike six, Mike six, check check. Podium Mike, podium Mike, one two three, one two three, podium Mike. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
had a game while they were against the board last week, so it was like uh, one or the other, I guess. So Maddie, just make sure you get close to the podium, like, okay? Like, don't don't be don't be this far away, otherwise you'll, you'll never get picked up. Okay. So just get be good close to it. Thank you. Yeah, we're just yelling. My name. Maddie. It went last year. It's awesome. That would be fun. Is this thing on? It is. And it's live streaming. Oh, it's live? So I won't Oh, it is live. Oh, it's
Congratulations. Everything. Congratulations. Well, no, no, wait, wait, wait. How much you actually need for your thing that you're getting on the 24th? What's that? The thing you're getting on the 24th here. Oh, okay, yeah, I guess that's like, yeah, yeah. that's good. <laughs>
seats up in the front row if anyone would like them. There's about five or six up here. Over there. Okay, with us this evening we have Glenn Boba, trustee, Jay Grover, trustee, Sherry Staffins, trustee, Jude Kuhn, our district clerk, Dr. Brian Graham, superintendent, I'm Ashley Dreyer, president, Sue Marston, vice president, yep. Joy Lamarca, trustee, Danielle Bruno, trustee, Mike Gloria, Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum Staff Development and Human Resources, Cheryl Cardone, Assistant Superintendent of Pupil Personnel Services, and Dr. Robert Merkel, Assistant Superintendent for School Business and Finance. Just a couple of announcements. If you could silence your cell phones, please. That would be appreciated. Um, and also, please note that there are emergency exits directly behind me and directly in front of me, and we need to keep that doorway clear in case of an emergency. All right. If I could have a motion to approve the agenda for this evening, April 16th, 2024, please. And a second. All in favor? Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried 7-0. Um, and if I could have the approval of the minutes from March 25th, 2024, please. And a second. second. All in favor? Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried 7-0. Now, we have some student ambassadors with us this evening. If we could have an introduction uh, for the middle school, please. Good evening, Dr. Graham and members of our District Board of Ed. Tonight, I'd like to introduce to you Oliver Stuarty. Oliver is a seventh grader in the middle school. He is a very active and involved middle schooler. He is our seventh grade student council treasurer, along with a player on our middle school rugby team, a part of our modified cross country team, and a member of our book club. Here to give you some updates tonight about what's been going on at the middle school. Good evening. My name is Oliver Suardi. I am the student council treasurer at Veronica e. Connor Middle School. My role as treasurer is to manage the student council budget and sign off on all spending. In this past month, our main focus was the Shamrock Strikes event. This was an event where students from all grades were able to purchase a ticket to bowl at Manor Lane for $15. We hosted this event on March 19th from 3 to 5 p.m. Students got to bowl for two hours and snacks and snack on pizza and pop. 
We had a total of 15 students attend the event, and it was a great success. We also recently hosted our Neurodiversity Spirit Week. It is important to learn about neurodiversity because it helps us understand and appreciate the unique strengths and challenges that all students bring to the classroom. Cerebral palsy, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, Down syndrome, autism, and different abilities were all recognized throughout the weeks. Along with the Spirit Week, we ran a fundraiser. ECMS students sold t-shirts, bracelets, crazy socks, and more. A total of $400 is raised and donated to Gigi's Playhouse to help support Down syndrome achievement into our very own BCMS Life Skills classroom. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if we could have an introduction for the high school, please. Cool. I'd like to introduce you to Thank you. She's a superstar. <laughs> uh, she's also on our superintendent and principal advisory board or council. So uh, it's always great to see you. I see softball yeah. and basketball this year. Yes. So, welcome. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Madison McGowan and I am a junior here at Grand Island High School. Recently there have been many events and activities going on in our school. Before spring break, we had our annual Phys Ed Volleyball Tournament. In your junior or senior class, you will pick a team consisting of either eight or ten, six students. After two weeks, the top two teams in your Phys Ed class will advance to a school-wide volleyball tournament. There you will proceed to single elimination games. Coming down to the final two teams, they will play in front of the whole school during the last period of the day. The team who wins the championship moves on to play a team consisting of eight, six teachers. During spring break, the French classes embarked on a six-hour flight adventure to France and Belgium. Traveling for a week, they toured all around France learning the geography and history of the area. Last week in Phys Ed, we learned hands-on CPR and how to use the AED, watching a video on how to use the AED on specific type humans, such as infants and toddlers. We were timed on how many compressions we could do within a minute as well. The first ever Grand Island girls flag football team games were played in the Bills Field House for training a couple weeks ago. The girls went one and three, playing very well for their first time ever playing flag football as a team. Last week on Friday, they had their home opener versus Health Sciences, winning 33 to nothing. What a great first win for the new Lady Vikings. The girls are back against Blueport today. Their game is raising money for the Crucial Catch Foundation, hoping the girls have a great rest of their first ever season to embark on history and the making of these bright young athletes. Yesterday, the league play for all Grand Island sports started. Every GI team playing took home a big win. The boys lacrosse team won against West Seneca West, winning 13-7. The boys baseball team took home a win against Niagara Falls, winning 7-1. And the girls softball team took home a huge win against the biggest opponent, Niagara Falls winning 4-2. to two. Boys tennis won as well against NT. Great job to all of our stellar athletes and a great start to their league play. After this spring break, all the students are energized and ready for a great last nine weeks of school. So that brings us to our recognition. <coughs> yes, thank you so much. So we have uh, quite a few athletes who uh, will be recognized today. And first, I'd like to start with Chase Fitz. Chase, could you come to the, uh, the podium? So I want to share with you some of Chase's <laughs> accomplishments uh, this year on our swim team. Uh, I believe undefeated this winter se season in all dual meets in the 53 style. Is that correct? Excellent. Well done. <laughs> At the Niagara Frontier League Championships, uh, you were the champion of the 50 meter freestyle and the 100 meter freestyle second place. So congratulations to that. At the Section 6 Class B Championships, you were the champion in the 50 freestyle and you finished fourth in the 100 meter. And you qualify, you were a state qualifier for a 50 meter freestyle. Uh, I just want to first congratulate you for all those accomplishments. Thank you. Chase, can you just say a few words of uh, how important it is uh, for you to participate in our swim program and maybe some other uh, highlights? 
it was great to be with my team and like have my parents supporting me and my whole family. That was the highlights. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> Chase, uh, what grade are you in? Uh, I'm a senior. Excellent. What, what does uh, post high school look like for you? Uh, I'm going to go to trade school for electrical. Excellent. Congratulations. Well done. So I want you to stick around after we do all of our athletes. We'll do a group picture with the board, okay? okay. Congratulations, Chase. I'd like to introduce Max Tafelski, who will talk about Dylan Castiglia. Dylan, if you could join with the podium. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, assistant wrestling coach here at Grand Island. Uh, this was my 10th year coaching out of high school, and I can definitely say that Dylan Castiglia is by far the fastest rising athlete I've ever seen out of any wrestler or really any athlete that I know of. When it comes to Dylan, he's been wrestling for two years, made it to the state tournament after his second year, right? He's only a junior, he compiled a 32-7 and seven, uh, record this year, and I think what's most important about Dylan, which is what I think is, about, is great about athletics, at the sectional qualifier, what, you placed fourth, correct? Placed fourth, I think you were the first seed? First, or top seed, falls to fourth, falls to fourth place, Makes it to sectionals, gets to sectionals, and clears house. Wins the sectional title, and I think that that's, besides the classroom, I think that's the most important part of what athletics can teach an athlete. We can, we can learn so much from athletics, and the adversity and the hardship that you face on one weekend doesn't mean that it'll, it'll repeat itself next weekend. And with Dylan, I think he's a great example of adversity and the heart of a champion. And in my opinion, when I think of athletes and my role as a coach, an assistant coach, I, I love when my athletes succeed. Their success is my success, their success is my pay. I love seeing my athletes wear the orange and black singlet at the state tournament, but what I'm most concerned with is the person that they become after high school. And I think it's very evident since I've known you for the last couple of years. Dylan is a great example of what we want in society and what we want to come out of Grand Island. And I think he's by far one of the best examples I've ever seen. Dylan Castiglia. Thank you, Max. Thank you. Dylan, just a few words. You're an 11th grader and you went to States. Uh, will you be returning to the team next year? Uh, I will be returning to the team. Okay. <laughs> That's great. And what goals do you have for next year? Uh, well, to make it to states again and hopefully place nice. at states. Nice. What weight class did you compete at? 124. Good. And how did it go at states? Uh, it was good. It was tough. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like it though, right? Like just that you're hungry for greater competition and greater goals. That's awesome. I know it's early, do you, it's way early, but do you have any post high school plans? Uh, I'm planning on going to college, I just don't know where. Okay, yeah. perfect. Uh, board members, do we have any other questions? Congratulations, stick around, we'll get a great picture of the board. If uh, Matt Miller's here, he's gonna introduce our girls hockey team. Hello, um, my name is uh, Matthew Miller, head coach of the Kenji Court girls hockey team, as we call ourselves. So we are Kenmore, Grand Island, and Lockport, um, which confuses some people, but uh, we love our uh, hodgepodge team here. But I want to thank the, the Board of Education, um, Athletic Director, Mr. Banker, and Dr. Graham, uh, and the parents and community for our just continued success um, in the support, uh, because without that support, we don't have all the success. Hockey's very expensive, we all know that, but um, our season this year was excellent. We went 19-4. Um, and four. Uh, We won the section championship for the third straight year and the fourth since Grand Island is part of our program, the eighth time overall, so we have a lot of winning tradition, and I've been with the, the program as an assistant coach since the beginning, and this is my first year as head coach, and this is, you know, one of, if not the best, 
uh, team that I've ever coached, and it's because of um, the young ladies, especially the ones here. Um, you know, just everything they bring to the locker room and, and the ice. Um, on top of being excellent athletes, they're just great people, and they like truly care about each other. And I think that's what makes our team uh, a step above the competition. Why we've had so much, so much success. Um, but you know, this winning tradition that we have is really built on the hard work of the players, and especially um, you know, the first thing we have to point out is Bella. Um, Bella has uh, 125 points now in her career, which is um, it's one of the top ten. Do you know what number you are overall? Six, number six overall in the in the whole league's history. Um, she's still got another year to go. Is just finishing up her junior year, so we'll see how high she can climb. Um, she was also recognized as um, All Federation first team, so recognized as one of the league's best players. Um, her line mate Izzy Burt, who uh, playing flag football, I believe, right now. Um, couldn't make it, but just another part of that top line success. Just an unbelievable two line, two way player. Um, Tiga Willett's same thing. Is you know she makes some highlight reel plays, but it's the all the stuff off the score sheet that makes her just you know a key part of the the team. And, you know the selflessness that she brings and the leadership. It's she's just a, an unbelievable kid. Um, you know we had a bunch of other forwards that couldn't make it here. Julia Ch uh, Chatama, Maddie Jagow, and Elise Elbarella. Just they helped make our forwards. Uh, probably the deepest bench in the league, which again led to our success that we could roll so many lines. Um, and then on the, the blue line, we have um, Natalie Cope here, um, and also Savannah Stamplinski, just two of our defensive core that you can put out in any situation, just know that they're going to make the play, they're gonna, you know, whether it's chipping in on offense um, or or just being absolute shutdown defensemen. I, we trust them uh, with every situation. It's unbelievable. And then Ella Johnson, um, season was a little cut short because of the injury, but um, just an excellent team player and uh, uh, moral support for our starting goaltender. Um, but just an excellent team season. Uh, you know, really hard playoffs. We have the toughest, Section 6 is the toughest uh, schedule for girls hockey. We have the longest playoff, and then we had this year play um, a team out of Rochester. That was a tough game, and then go to the States, and we just ran into a buzzsaw in the championship game. But even losing that game, we were the first team to ever go up this yeah, year on this team, right. and the first team to score more than two goals on this like team. Two, so. two nothing, right? right yeah, right. Bell scored like 13 <laughs> seconds in the game or something, and then we scored a minute later, and it was just, yeah. no, I was, I turned to uh, one of our assistant coaches and said, this is going to be the longest 43 minutes of the game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it was, yeah. And we, we had them until late in the second period, and then that team just, there, and they turned on the next level. And, Wish it didn't end that way, but it was just, you know, an unbelievable season, a memorable one, and uh, just can't be more proud of the girls and their efforts. So Absolutely. they make they make me look good. People give me congratulations, but it's all them. That's great. Um, let's give them a round of applause. And then, <laughs> and then, and then, can you go to the microphone real quick? What grade are you in, Natalie? I'm a junior. Excellent, excellent. And coming back to the team next year? Yeah. Do you have any goals for next year? Uh, to score a goal. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. What position do you play? Defense. Excellent. Thank you, Natalie. And Bella, your last name is Jamie, right? And yeah, we've got a couple Bellas on the team. Bella, 11th grader? Yes. Coming back next year? Of course. Do you have any goals for next year? Uh, try to do number one. Yeah. You guys are so close. It's awesome. Yeah. It was, it was great going out to see your championship game. And you have tons of support from, from the communities. So we're very proud of you guys, okay? Uh, and any post-high school ideas yet? Not really. That's okay, Natalie? Mm -hmm. uh, I played college softball. Let's go, all right, very good. Congratulations, stick around for a picture, okay? <laughs> Is Izzy Martinez here, coach of indoor track? Let's go, Izzy. And bring, and bring all the students up with you. Yeah. Thank you. Izzy, it's great to see you. Thank you guys you really had a great guys. season again. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was, it was something I never experienced in 35 years of coaching. Um, but first of all, I want to thank the board members, administrators, Dr. Graham, for recognizing our kids, recognizing the hockey players, Dylan, uh, Chase. It's, um, it, it, it's kind of funny because I, I taught in a nearby district, I won't mention the name, for 33 years. And I coached there for 33 years and I was never invited to a board meeting. So thank you very much. This is nice. Um, that being said, uh, yeah, it was a great season for the indoor track team, and I'm going to recognize them one by one. Perfect. Okay, and I will start with Luke. Okay, I know it's a little, not not so polite, but 
I'm a man with a uh, crazy mind up here. So anyhow, Luke Watkins, um, uh, Night of Wheatfield's loss was our game. He transferred to us from Wheatfield a couple of years back. And last year kind of had uh, what I would call a, a somewhat of a breakout season. And at the end of the season, unfortunately, he missed qualifying for sectionals by point one for the 100 meters. And that was kind of upsetting to him, to me as a coach, uh, because you know we kind of thought something went a little weird there towards the end of the season. In any event, um, fast forward to this past winter, Luke uh, was our definite team leader for the boys. Now, I'll, I'll give you his individual exploits, uh, because he was also part of one of our, uh, our 4 by 200 meter relay team. Um, and that 4 by 200 meter relay team also broke the Grand Island School record. And I do want to mention the other boys, Liam O'Kell, Jake Cicery, and Gio Granelli were all part of that relay with Luke. Um, and that kind of, you know, kind of got overlooked a little bit because of what the three of them did and how they did it. Uh, in any event, so Luke, um, at our team championships, which is like our uh, class level championships, if you will, for, for large, small, I'm sorry, for, for large, medium, and small schools. So Luke was third in 55 meters at that meet running a 6.71, which basically was the first time he broke the school record in the 55 meters, which was held since 2009 here at GI. Um, and I believe, let's see, shortly thereafter, he broke it again before we got to the qualifiers. And at the Section 6 championship meets or our state qualifier meet, uh, he ran a 6.68, lowering his school record once again, which put him third in Section 6. However, he did hit the state qualifying standard, which allowed him to go to the state meet. And at the state meet, Luke ended up finishing 28th overall in the 55, and was the fastest Section 6 sprinter that day. He beat the two kids that beat him at our championships, which was kind of really nice to see. Um, and uh, those two boys that he lost to, um, you know, they were very good sprinters. And um, let's see, uh, what else do I want to mention about Luke? Uh, this evening, just really quickly, we just came off the track. That's why I'm dressed like this. And I apologize for my appearance, but uh, you know we came right off the track. Um, tonight, Luke ran a 10.5 in the 100 meters and a 22 flat in the 200, wow. which Luke, that's awesome. had it been FAT, those are two two new school records. Okay, so um, he's well on his way, hopefully to achieve bigger and better things this year. Uh, Luke Watkins, guys. All right. Okay, next to me, I have Brooke Christensen, and. Uh, Brooke has been with us forever. Uh, let's see, I've been coaching here since 2012-13, and Brooke's forever. been here since she was about this tall. Okay, very good. Okay, you guys From middle school. Yes. yes, yes. Um, in any event, um, Brooke went undefeated this winter in Section 6 in the weight throw. Okay, and if you don't know what the weight throw is, it's basically a ball connected to a tether, which you rotate and you throw it as far as you can. Okay, it requires athleticism, strength, power, speed, you name it. She's got it. Um, so at our class championships, Brooke won both the shot and the weight throw, and she was named the most valuable athlete for the field events at the class meet this winter for Section 6. Awesome. That was, you know, the first uh, great thing that she did this winter. Um, at our state qualifiers, okay, Brooke finished sixth in the shot. All right, she'll be the first to tie. That was, that's not her best event. Um, and first in the weight throw. And what impressed me most about the weight throw and how she won that, on her final throw, uh, you could see as she's walking into the circle that she kind of turned it up a notch. And, um, you know, after letting off a big roar, she threw a 49 feet, uh, five and a half inches, which was a new GI school record, nice. which she had been chasing all year. Um, and you know, maintain her grip on the section six, once again being on the field for the year. And two weeks later at the state meet, Brooke finished fourth for the public school championships wow. and fifth in the federation, which includes uh, private, independent Catholic schools at the state meet. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, All right. Christensen. Okay. And uh, I saved 
this other girl here for last. <laughs> hey. Haley Martinez happens to be my daughter. Does she call you coach or dad? Uh, I, she can call me whatever she wants <laughs> at this point. She's earned it. Um, so Haley, uh, you know, it's kind of fun coaching your own child. I didn't really know when it first started how I deal with it, but it's gone particularly well. Um, in any event, uh, so Haley this year was first in the 55 meters at the Section 6 class meet, okay? And she ran a 7.36 at the class meet, also won the 300 meters in a time of 42.5, which was the first school record, well, it was her own school record that she had broken in the 300 from uh, last year. She too, as Brooke, was voted the track MVP, so that was kind of a special day for GI. We were, we had both the track MVP and field MVP for the girls, and that was quite a day for us, okay? Um, now, at the state qualifiers, Haley took third at the 300 meters, which basically um, qualified her for the intersectional relay at the states. Intersectional relays, basically, she runs with three other girls from three other schools who also happen to take third in the particular event that they would run in the relay. Okay, so um, Haley broke the school record again in the 300 there, 4206. And at the state meet, um, that intersectional relay that she ran with broke the section six record. So, um, you know, not only is she in the Grand Islands uh, record books, she's also in the section six record books for that uh, intersectional relay. Uh, in the 55, Haley won the section six championships, beating last year's champion and a new GI school record of 732, and that record was from 2010. Uh, at the state meet, she finished 18th overall, once again being the fastest section six finisher. Uh, the intersectional relay finished fourth in the state, fifth in the federation. And uh, tonight, Haley was a double winner in the 100 and 400, and also, oh, that was it, right? For tonight. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Haley Congratulations. Congratulations. We have two seniors in that group, right? Yes. So, uh, Luke, maybe you could just share with the board uh, post high school plans. Uh, I plan on joining the uh, U.S. Air Force. Excellent. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Haley. I think you're a senior uh, post high school plans. I plan to go to UV and major in business, and I'm also going to be running indoor and outdoor track. Oh, congratulations. Well. That's fantastic. <laughs> I know you're a junior. I, I know you're very uh, committed uh, to your craft. Uh, do you have post high school plans? Um, not yet. I'm going to go to college to, for secondary education. Excellent. And hopefully compete in yeah. college. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sure you will. That's great. Congratulations. Thank Please you. stick around for a picture. <laughs> so for the board, I just want to, there was one more person that we wanted to recognize today, and it's Coach Bob Simpson. Uh, the boys hockey team had a successful 23-24 campaign overall. Uh, they defined what is true team spirit with many individual players uh, coming together as a team and fulfilling their roles and achieving their goals. Uh, they won their league uh, during the regular season, allowing the fewest goals throughout the year. Their season was cut short after a quarterfinal sectional loss to Winslow South after seven Grand Island players were hit with the flu. I was there at that game, and, and they were one after another going to the locker room not feeling well at all. At the conclusion of the season, though, just to shine a spotlight on Coach Simpson, uh, he was selected to be the head coach of Team North Towns, which was uh, an annual uh, senior all-star game. So Bob had the honor of coaching some of the best players, including Peyton Abbott, one of our students, and Eric Heisch. Uh, also one of our students in that Western New York event. So even though Bob's not here, Bob, you're not here, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> now we'll turn those athletes back for a picture with the board.
for our families, I'll take a couple pictures of Alice, and families can take photos. Okay. Right, and families, go ahead. Residents who have previously signed up to speak will be recognized by the president when speaking. Please identify yourselves first. Speak clearly and loudly enough for everyone in the room to hear you. Speakers are requested to limit their remarks to no more than three minutes, to appoint a spokesperson if a concern is a group concern, and if necessary or desired, to supplement verbal presentations with any written reports. Personal comments toward a member of the community, staff, or board of ed will not be considered appropriate. Welcome. Hi, I'm Molly Ellenfield. I'm a Grand Island resident. To our Board of Education, Dr. Graham, we would like to start by thanking you for taking on the arduous task of presenting a fiscally sound and balanced budget to the Grand Island community. We recognize that this is no easy feat, and we thank you for supporting the teachers, staff, and students of the Grand Island School District and making decisions that are in the best interest of our schools and students. At the last board meeting, it was indicated that filling Ms. Andrews' position was under consideration. Thank you for this opportunity to say a few words in regards to maintaining our current 21 classroom teachers at the kindergarten and first grade levels. Our building came together as teachers and support staff to put into words our concerns if this position was left unfilled and our class sizes increased. With the anticipated increased enrollment of incoming kindergarten students, it became evident how passionate we all are in creating a loving, safe, and enriching, enriched learning environment for not only our students, but for our families. Sidway is magical, and every family that's had a child here will attest to that. The, individuals, the individual care and attention we give is integral to the, this unique experience. Year after year, the Grand Island community entrusts their children in our care and teaching. Some parents are sending their child to school for the very first time. Many of you can think back to this day in your own child's life, but let us all remember what first your four, five, and six-year-old may have had. Your first bus ride and the first time walking alone into an unfamiliar building. They will open their first locker and unpack their first backpack, and all of this will happen before 9 a.m. Some children may do this with pride, some with hesitation, and others even tears. Now imagine being the teacher as these children arrive, wanting to greet each and every one, offer hugs as many as needed, and guiding each and every child through these firsts. I am sure you are seeing the importance and impact of class size. 
The research on the impact of class size in student learning and growth is substantial. A quick review of studies completed widely supports a lower student to teacher ratio for the kindergarten to grade three population. The highly notable STAR experiment, student teacher achievement ratio, identified significant differences in student outcomes in grade K through three when class size was reduced to 15 to 17 students. 30 seconds. Smaller class size allows for individualized attention, increased instructional time, better understanding of our students' individual needs, increased academic achievement, and improved behavioral performance. Thank you. Next we have uh, Mrs. Brockway. Maria Christina Brockway. My name is Maria Christina Brathway, and I am a Grand Island resident also. Current research trends have focused on the social-emotional needs of our students in creating a safe, nurturing classroom and school environment. Safety and acceptance are basic human needs that are essential for a child to dare to be a critical thinker, take a risk at trying an unfamiliar task, be bold enough to show creativity, and be humble enough to take responsibility. Dr. David Osher spoke of the importance of connectedness and the experience of support. Students who feel connected to school across these social emotional indicators are more likely to have improved attitudes towards school, learning, and teachers, heightened academic aspirations, motivation, and achievement, and more positive social attitudes, values, and behavior. He further indicates that a smaller class size is a critical factor in creating this connectedness which we know is essential given the increasingly complex issue within today's society. The mission of the Grand Island Central School District is to foster academic excellence, personal growth, and social responsibility. As educators, we are dedicated to implementing evidence-based strategies that cater to the diverse needs of our students. However, we require your support to sustain and enhance these efforts. Ma maintaining the current number of teachers in kindergarten and first grade aligns with the district's mission. Class size has a direct impact on our classroom environment, sense of community, and most importantly, relationships. In any given lesson before the learning even occurs, the classroom environment needs to be well established and developed. As the number of students increases within the classroom, there are notable differences in the classroom culture. The physical environment feels smaller. The noise level increases, causing disruption, and developing a relationship with each and every child and their families becomes less attainable. Relationships are at the core of our instruction. Students need to feel connected to the teacher and to one another. They need to feel heard and valued, and they need to develop trust. When all of these components are well developed, students are willing to take risks, engage in learning, and become part of a classroom community a community where they work on problem solving, communication, and their individual self-worth. There is nothing more heartwarming than seeing a child comfort or support another child, not because they were asked, but because it has been instilled through the relationships and skills they have developed. Please maintain our 21 classroom teachers, therefore maintaining class sizes to ensure we can develop meaningful relationships with each student and their families in order for them to reach their fullest potential. Thank you. Jennifer Reynolds. Hello, my name is Jennifer Reynolds, also a resident of the Grand Island School District. Well, resident of Grand Island. The size of class significantly influences a student's academic opportunities, access to personalized support, and overall instructional outcomes. Extensive research consistently underscores the critical role of engagement and practice in fostering student progress. Smaller class size of class sizes afford greater opportunities within each lesson for eliciting responses and closely monitoring the engagement of all students. One of the remarkable abilities of teachers is their keen observation of classroom dynamics. This allows for tailored instruction, including posing higher level thinking questions to some students and providing scaffolded supports to others. However, the effectiveness of the approach is contingent upon the number of students being supported. As class sizes increase, teachers' capacity to closely monitor students diminish, resulting in fewer opportunities for active participation, reduced corrective feedback, and prolonged instructional time. Please, at a minimum, maintain our 21 classroom teachers 
therefore maintaining, or better yet, lowering class sizes to ensure we can continue to provide effective instruction, active engagement, and individualized instruction. Historically, unanticipated late summer registrations to the district have made it necessary to hire new teachers well into August, leaving little time for new faculty members to adequately prepare for the coming school year. Recognizing the value of these positions is essential to ensuring continuity and excellence in education. As we stand together to honor the commitments of the district's belief and vision statements, we want to sincerely thank you for allowing us the opportunity to share the importance of class size at the primary level. We deeply value being entrusted with Grand Island's youngest learners and know that we can continue to honor the tradition of excellence in early childhood education with current class sizes or smaller. All 21 of our doors are always open and we personally invite each and every one of you in to experience the magic that only Sidway can offer. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Andrew, um, did you want to speak? I have an Andrew on here. No. Did you? Are you here for government? Sorry. Sorry. You're here for yeah, government? Yeah, I'm here for government. Oh. <laughs> 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 I'm here for government. I'm here for government. Okay, I'm not sorry. <laughs> Okay, thank you. That is all we have then for the voice of the people. Uh, that brings us to curriculum and instruction with Mr. Horia. Hi, I do have a few things to add to um, the public, just so they're aware. I do have two items on our agenda. The first, the first I'm just proud to announce is a textbook adoption form, which is more really a program adoption form. So we spent a significant amount of time this year working with our elementary teachers in grades K through five with the literacy committee designed to develop a new program for our three through five students at both uh, K-1 and Youth. Um, I'm proud to say that our committee spent a lot of time working together in a very productive, collaborative way. And at the end of that committee work, um, we spent time not only meeting with vendors, but looking at what works best for our teachers and our district and for our students and selected a new magnetic reading program through curriculum associates that program is going to be going into effect next year. Um, some of the advantages of this program for our students in our community are that we're going to have an aligned curriculum from both buildings. Our teachers will be working from the same framework throughout the year, which means they'll be aligned in their pacing, they'll be aligned in the content that they're teaching. Um, another advantage of that curriculum is it still leaves room for the craft of teaching so that um, there are opportunities for our students to really read real books in addition to just the content. So we selected Magnetic because it's not a prescribed cur curriculum. Every day is not locked in the step of one, from one teacher to the other, but it gives some flexibility for our teachers to continue some of those great craft, um, things that they learn in the craft of teaching, um, add in some supplementary materials, but still align them in a way that we think is going to benefit our students. It's highly um, rated through Ed reports, and it's um, also one of the top rated programs and um, well aligned with I'm really excited about it. This is a long time coming in Grand Island, and I think our elementary teachers um, should be proud that we, we, we chose this program and we're looking forward to see how we can improve our ELA instruction moving forward um, in that in those buildings. So I just wanted everyone to um, be aware of that, and I am asking them forward to take action on that. My one question is there yeah. is that development training that comes along with this, or is that in house? How are we yeah, there's some, some staff development training that we'll be working with curriculum associates, which we actually work with them through our math um, program right now, too. So they have trainers that we can utilize. Um, we are still looking at whether it's more beneficial for our teachers to get that training in the summer or, um, or moving forward next year. But the good news is we are getting those books and the, the materials in, in a few weeks so that our teachers will have in the summer and the rest of this year to kind of start planning internally. And then we hope that the PE can just supplement yeah, it'd nice be nice to see some summer work or you know, some right. nice yeah, film project. Sure, be kind of Great, thanks. Okay, any other questions? All right, um, can I have a motion to approve um, curriculum and instruction item A, please? I'll motion. And a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? 
Any abstentions? Motion carried 7-0. And then the second item is just informational is our monthly curriculum report, but I did want to highlight um, last month, March 27th, we had a STEM fair district-wide at the um, tech wing of the high school for students from all grades, elementary, middle, and high. Um, our students were incredible. We do partner with Thermo Scientific um, on this event, so they provide some prizes for our students. Um, if you were able to attend, I know I was able to attend and actually go around. I know Dr. Graham was able to attend and go around and actually meet with all of the students and get that. The fabulous thing about this project is that our kids design or experiments or model an experiment or do something to show their passion in science and they present to the adults, they present to the community, and they are very articulate in their presentations and passionate about their presentations. So we're really excited. There's some pictures in there if you want to check it out. Um, and proud of that partnership, and I want to thank uh, the administrators who helped out, um, Laura Estino, Estinos, Melissa Nesselbeck, um, Amy McMahon, who are all the pivotal parts of that program, and then our volunteer judges as well. So, thank you. Thank you. All right, that brings us to our next item personnel instructional. If I could have a motion to approve PI 1 through PI 3, please. And a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried 7 0. And personnel non instructional, if I could have a motion to approve PNI 1 through PNI 3, please. And a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried 7 0. That brings us to finance with uh, Dr. Michael. So I think we should probably start with the uh, presentation and then go to who the actual meetings are both on the end. Is that okay, Michelle? Sure. Well, the budget is for the action. Yeah. So we want to break that one out. Sure. Well, I would break it out. I want to just break everything out quick and then break it out. So first we have on action is uh, some donations for our SRP recognition event. We had an anonymous donor for $150. The curriculum Associates uh, donated $500. The Administrators Union $250. The Teachers Union $250. Jeff and Tina Hassler, 500. Leonard Bus Sales, 1,000. Marston Power Supply, 250. Nicer, $1,000. Zero Eyes, $1,000. So, um, requesting action to accept those donations. Thank you very much to those generous donors. Uh, second item is from another uh, donation from the Rotary Club of Grand Island. They want to donate $1,500 for the growing readers. The third item is some obsolete equipment from buildings and grounds. Uh, there's a Skag turf motor, a 24 uh, turf mower that we are looking to dispose of and auction off. Uh, it's a 2014 mower. The fourth item is some uh, obsolete buses. We already uh, voted at a previous meeting to Google those obsolete. We had uh, several bids on those. Um, and so we're looking for action to accept those bids. The next item is a budget transfer over $15,000. That's to help us cover the costs of contract and transportation for this year. Uh, the next item is uh, increase to a current contract that we have with Assured Partners. Um, they do some data filing for us that's required on um, the prescription drug contributions by our members. Uh, so they help us out with that, and so that would be a $2,000 increase on that contract uh, to cover the filing costs for that. The next item would be the property tax report card. Um, based on the taxes for this, the proposed taxes for next year. And then item H is a proposal from Alliance Education Associates as we've talked uh, about our transportation. Um, we want to do a study, and uh, this is a proposal that they have to take a look at several different aspects of our transportation operation and give us um, some recommendations on how to help us 
uh, recruit and retain bus drivers and, and help us uh, solve that current um, problem that we have over in transportation and finding drivers. Wow. Can you just let the board know that if the board adopts and uh, takes action positively for this study, that the study, uh, the length of time of the study, and hopefully the results will be connected. So uh, the, the gentleman that I spoke with from ADA is uh, he's currently working with us on the study, so um, he would be in town and likely to be able to start. Uh, we would expect the study to be done somewhere probably in June, most likely. Uh, I'm going to work with him if, if it's uh, voted on. Work with him to get the study done as quickly as possible, so any changes that we, that we might decide to make, uh, we can give people as much notice as possible. Okay. I was just going to ask the person doing the study would come and present to the board. Correct. Yes, sir. Okay, so um, does anyone have any questions about items A through H before we vote on those separate from the budget? We have some slides. Yeah, for the budget presentation. Yeah. This is the other questions on the other action items that we're discussing. Should we hold off on the property tax? Then the budget was done. You know, I did think about that. So um, on the report card, it's only regarding the property tax. And the, the, that, that is what it is. What's that? It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the it's the amount. Yeah. Do we have to approve the budget before we do that? Are they together or not? I, I don't believe so, because I don't believe, unless we're going to propose changing the property tax um, rate. Okay, yeah. uh, I don't think we need to, because this isn't. Um, no, I, I, I understand. Yeah. Okay, so any other questions for A through H items? All right, so if I could have a motion to approve A through H in the finance section. A motion. Okay, and a second? So, I'm sorry, H is the one one which we're accepting that, that study. specific person, right? That was, Correct. That was a revenue at 32 people. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So they would do a study, a deep dive on transportation, and then present to the board its findings. Okay. Okay, um, can I have a second, please? Does anyone want a second? I can second it. Okay, thanks, Glenn. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried 7 0. Thank you. Um, and then there are a few informational items on there as well. Uh, the check warrants for March are on there. Uh, budget transfers 115000 and extracurricular reports. That's the informational items, and then our budget presentation. Thank you, Bob. Any, Bob, anything different or unique on the agenda today? Uh, no, not really. You know, most of it we've seen before. Um, really, the, the only big changes are some adjustments that we made for um, our anticipated agreements with two of our meeting units. Uh, other than that, it's mostly remained unchanged. Is, is it has not yet. Um, I, I saw some information yesterday that uh, allegedly the, the, the deal had been reached, uh, but then shortly thereafter it seemed like the state senate seemed to recant that and say we're not quite there yet. So we have not gotten any additional numbers on state aid yet. So, so every school district in the area has to adopt the budget today, correct? That's correct. Not, not necessarily today, but by, by most of the we would recommend today. We could do a special meeting, but honestly, the change from state aid, it's not, it's not going to be significant. We think that we'll get the 159,000 back, so we think the safe harmless is going to go away. We'll get the 159 back that was taken away in our foundation aid. So we believe we'll be made whole from the foundation aid we received last year to this year. So that'll be the 159 added to the for that. And secondly, we think the governor has accepted a change in the uh, CPI formula from 2.4% to 2.8%.
So given you know whatever that means, it may not mean a lot for Grand Island. If none of the districts that I know, and Bob, I don't know if you've done any calculations, we're not entirely sure with the change from 2.4 to 2.8 in CPI will net in foundation aid. But the 159 isn't included in the That's correct because it. Yeah. So even though the governor had a press conference and spoke for a long time yesterday, uh, she spoke globally in large numbers. We need to see the school aid runs. And uh, I just want to give a shout out to Angelo Marnello. He's on it. He usually texts me when they're available, and they're just not available at this time. Yeah. So an excellent question because uh, today, if the board agrees, we would ask for action on this budget. And then if those additional dollars come in, that, that'll be great, right? You know, but it's, we think it's a small amount, right? Right, yeah. And the budget amount will, will stay the same one way the other. Correct, right. yes, sir. Correct. It would just decrease the amount coming from the appropriated funding. Yeah. Yes, correct. That's what I would figure. Which would be good. Perfect. We'll take anything we can get. <laughs> That's right, but those are excellent questions, and we definitely appreciate that. So I just want to, share with the board before we get into the numbers again our current enrollment so you'll see uh, this has been updated as of april 1st so there may be some slight changes uh, with respect to uh, current enrollment our, our teachers from sidway did an excellent job presenting and talking about the 21 teachers that are currently at uh, sydney which gives class sizes of you know this almost 19 and 18 for kindergarten and first grade before I move on from current enrollment, does anybody have any questions? I like that number much better, the 18 students in a class. I just to speak my mind then, you know, when you look at the next page, which says 20 student, 20 teachers and 20, 25, then that's basically 21 students in a class. At kindergarten level, that is, that is quite, that's quite a lot already. And then with, if we have students moving in, you know, I would like the time for the teachers to prepare. I'd like to have the time for um, the notes to go home with what teacher. I mean, I remember um, Mrs. Allenfield's presentation really hit home because I do remember when both of my daughters were in kindergarten and you wait for the letter of who your teacher is going to be. And I know when I did start on the board, we did not replace an elementary teacher and um, we had a little debacle with. Uh, having to switch teachers after letters went out. So I, I obviously, we, I'd like to avoid that if we could, Thank but I... We had 30 students in the last two weeks before school. Yeah, yeah I, I do not that. I guess I would just add to my only concern with that number is that it's as high as it's been in 10 years. Like if you look back to 2014, 15, it was 21, 22, 19. I guess the question is, at what point would we decide to add that teacher? Yeah, at the beginning. Do we August. have a number of? Yeah, the recommendation is to hold and add a teacher at the beginning of August based on the kindergarten enrollment. Well before I notify. Yeah. yeah. Do we normally send those letters? Well, I don't know. Mike, do you know? Letters go out. Third week of August. Yeah. Third week of August. Yeah. <laughs> so. Which was established after that debacle. Yeah. That, that was a weird year. That yeah, was. I that was. was I do remember That is my other concern, is what Sherry was just mentioning, finding teachers, and not just finding them, but the quality of the teachers. It's right now, in May, everyone's graduating. Um, I remember when I was applying, I sent out 600 resumes in May, um, you know, in 1995, and I think that right now is when everybody's looking for a position. So, are we going to lose a quality candidate or it's already possibly possibly available 
or are we going to lose many, many quality candidates to other school districts who will be able to have training over the summer with new textbooks and things that are coming out, and then in August try to, you know, get get a new teacher up to speed that maybe is someone that wasn't hired anywhere else, and possibly for a reason. I mean, I, I'm not I'm not saying that we ever have um, teachers that we wouldn't want to hire, but I think. Sometimes the best candidates are the first ones scooped up, just like anything else. Well, there's, so. there's no doubt, and, and the board knows, and the board has been very generous to add, allow us to add a teacher if the enrollment uh, suggests that we should. And so based on that, and based on the hiring that has occurred in August, from my perspective, we've hired high-quality teachers in August. We haven't let anybody go that I'm aware of who's been hired as in a probationary position in kindergarten or first grade to my extent over the last eight years. So regardless if we've hired somebody in May or June or in August, I think our teachers have been highly effective. And uh, that's just my um, understanding of how things have occurred over the last uh, eight years. I would also say to you, you know, if you take a look at class sizes from 2014 to 2023, the 2022-23 school year, we had class sizes of 20, close to 21 and 22. The 21-22 school year, we had 20 and 19. So it isn't uh, unheard of. Yes, class sizes are smaller, right, this year. But these numbers in this row reflect kindergarten over time. Okay, and it's always great, you know, if we have uh, smaller class sizes for sure. Uh, but it's not unheard of that kindergarten has been at 20 or close to 21 in the past. I would also direct the board's attention to um, the way we make assumptions about kindergarten enrollment. As the board knows, we use data that's called live birth data. And I know it's hard to see probably from where you're sitting, but the, this looks back five years to the births attributed to Grand Island. It takes into account the actual kindergarten enrollment, and then this top row is the factor, the increase. Uh, so if you took the birth data and multiplied it by the uh, factor here, then we make an educated guess as to how many children will enroll in kindergarten. So what you can't see are these numbers here extending out over the next few years with attributed births to Grand Island in the 170s and I believe this, this, this number is 168. So if you take this and multiply it by a factor, uh, by, what would that factor be, 1.1? I think it's 1.18 or yeah. so. So that's what we do. We take that, we make an educated guess, we look at this data, and then we, uh, to be honest with you, I think that this projected enrollment, that this number right here, I think it's, it's inflated because if you take this 215 and you add these 11 children who will be kindergarten students in a self-contained classes at Sidway, that predicts a very high number of kids total in the building for kindergarten. So the reason why I, my recommendation is to wait is because this is a, a guess. We guess using data and I would like to see us look, you know, look at this all summer. <coughs> Mike, I think we have 130 UPK kids, right? 135. So we know that more than likely they're going to enroll. But honestly, that 215 number could very well be 200 you know, at, the, uh, at, at the beginning of September. Now, it could be 215, it could be 220. But the board has always been generous and has said, add it when I've asked. And that's asked the past eight years. So that, that is just my recommendation to the board. And the board, you know, you can direct me to, to do something different. All I'm asking for is to let's wait and watch these numbers. So I guess if you, if you, if you wanted to do that, where, where would you um, suggest we take the money from the budget um, to set it aside for that teacher today so that we can balance the budget I would suggest we take it wherever we're taking it from in August and, and take it now so that the teacher can be prepared and planned. I mean, I'm not sure where Brian would take it in August, but that would be his decision to make. Well, I, I understand that, and I think you would have to give them time to come up with 
then you know where, where they're coming from. Right? So my suggestion before was, is there a way that we can reduce the other, the, the expenditures that we're listing under other, and free up money is there to use for other areas? I know I sure. mentioned it before. Well, and well, I uh, do we think that's our final budget. It does not involve yeah, and I know you love to give the average, but like we're missing the expenditures and the organization. And if the other was we really reduced, like to see it the same, so we're comparing. And if there was any changes, we would like to see the reaction. I like, apologize for that. I I tried to apologize I previously. Know. And, <laughs> and also, and I could be remembering incorrectly, but correct me if I'm wrong. But I remember looking at the civic class size and then there's the number always seems to be higher because um, those we get higher and higher numbers. And I don't know if it's because it's just for the best time just July first and how the local and the area like the local daycare Correct, yeah. that That's you know, the we have on the island here. Right. Where we know that kiddos may not be accounted for in the library but they moved here and then the new construction is coming into mm -hmm. Grand Island also. Sure. Yeah. Of course, yeah. It's just, there's, as you know, there's obviously a couple subdivisions that are coming and that are currently being watched. So, you know, I look at these numbers and I just, you know, I remember from when, even when my daughter started over in to Monaco, and those numbers ended up being a little higher because of those kiddos that were local, you know, in the daycare system. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, it, it really is looking at births and you compare the births to the actual enrollment, which gives uh, gives us the multiplier to make the educated guys. So I guess my question is, is, is there a way under that other that some of that money can be free up under that itemization that we're looking at to apply elsewhere, whether it's August, whether it's now, you know, or um, other areas? Yeah. So Especially if we haven't used it in so many years. I know there was some that was, that was in places, but we had not used it because we had not needed it. Either. Well, I you know we had talked about um, in the Board of Education Conference and travel, correct? And yeah, I would disagree with that, but I've been thinking about it. I know that, um, you know, obviously we want to do our part, but I think it's really important for us to get educated. You know, this is obviously my first term, and I've attended every event that I've possibly attended. And I think I've learned so much from each conference. And many other conferences that are coming up, our superintendent is speaking at. For us to not attend or to take that away, um, you know, Let's he's giving let us. Let me finish. I haven't finished my sentence. We also, every every week, we have food brought in for our meetings. And like tonight, over half of it was locked. I think we could scale back on the money. I mean, we have $5,000 in that budget line. Um, I, I think we could take a look at that and cut that in half. I mean, it's a $5,000 budget line, $2,500. Sure, as long as I'm still able to go to the conferences because, again, I've learned so much even at the There's $5,000 on that. I don't, you know, none of us are able to travel. You know, I think we could probably cut that in half Right, but it well, doesn't, right? If, if it were to happen where you could attend, you know, I think it's important for all board members to attend trainings and to attend these events because this is where we <coughs> learn about how to be better board members. This is where we get educated on I budget. Think it's definitely and I think that it's necessary. I know. I, I, I don't know. Just, 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 just yeah. scale back. I know with my vacation time, I, I will not travel this year on the board. I would love to, but with my vacation time. I think the only problem is that once you take it away, you get it back. It's kind of well, very difficult. We're looking so, for money. Is what we're saying we're, we're trying to do our part, right? To give back. To sure. I, of course, I want to do our part. I just don't. I just don't want to not be able to get the training. I'd rather, that I'd rather put the money in our classrooms and into our teachers than to say that I may travel this year. Or that I need so much food at the board meeting. I, I, I'm saying that personally. You don't have to say that I'm saying that. What goes into the classrooms and into our teachers and into the education of our children is more important to me than what, what I'm going to get out of it. Sure, and as a fellow board member, where this does affect you know, things that I'm doing, I don't want to say I think it's important that we are able to attend events. That's all I'm saying is we would not want to take anything away where I cannot continue my education as a board member because. Again, I, there's so much I don't know. I've never been a teacher. I've never worked in education other than as a nurse. So when I go to these, you learn so much more about budget so that when we're here, we can give informed information, um, especially like the legislative you know, uh, events that we go to and 
Yeah, it's um, just a suggestion. You know, I just want to make sure that we're able to attend those that are really important I for think, us to learn. I, I, I think that both are true. I think yeah, I mean, training is important and yeah. investing in our teachers and our classrooms is certainly uh, a priority as well. I think that, you know, I think this board and, and, and the administration has only supported class sizes that are reasonable and make sense. I think that that won't change in August. If we find out in August that based upon the numbers that make sense to have another teacher, I'm confident that the administration will recommend that, and I'm confident that the board that consists at that point in time um, will likely support that. So. Um, you know, I'm certainly more than willing to wait until we have you know, complete information and then at that point in time make a determination to add and keep the class sizes, you know, along the line as we always done. And you know, we did it from there. I think uh, um, you know, the, that's Brian's recommendation, I think it makes sense. I think that's it's consistent with our philosophy of keeping class sizes reasonable. And with the numbers coming exactly the way they, 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 as projected here, I think it's probably pretty likely that this board will say we need to hire another teacher and do that. So, and that's my thoughts um, um, at this point. So, yeah. I, sorry, I would have to agree with Brian. I think that the numbers that we started off with I know we've talked about the data being skewed in the past, but I don't know if it's skewed so much that it would like warrant it not needing to take action earlier than later. So, uh, Sherry, where did you say you stood on the issue? Yeah, I think that action now the first layer would be important just because of the new teacher training that occurs um, with Marty and the term before. Um, and um, you know, and Could we get information sooner than early August? I mean, what if within the next few months we're never really seeing that number rise towards that 215 or even higher? Yeah. I'd be happy to keep you know, up to date with the regular moment. Yeah. That that early August, Lisa so Leary gives me a weekly uh, update starting in we're July. We're already at the 215. Is that where we can see right now? No, so where do not we at all. No. We're, we can make an educated guess that the 135 students in our new UBK will register for kindergarten. So that would probably be where we are right now. We, do, we don't have 215 kids enrolled or registered. That was a projected number based on my first data. So that's my, why my recommendation is let's wait and watch. We, we have done this in the past. The board has been very generous. And I think. Honestly, the teachers that Mike Antonelli or Denise Dunbar have hired later in the summer are outstanding. We've never let anybody go. We've never, uh, let, to my knowledge, we haven't made a mistake in a hire. And I would just add one more thing. There are a lot of districts that are laying people off, right? Hamburg, West Seneca, Depew. There will be an influx of teachers available to hire. That's just one, one observation that I made. Um, and to Joy's point, is that 135, does that, that does not take into account any children in a daycare? No, no I, um, yes, sure. So there could be kids at Iowa Kids or you know, other kinder kids that aren't enrolled yet. Right? The projected number is slightly inflated. It's 215 for regular classes. We also know we have 11 children for sure going to be in self-contained classes that will be categorized as <coughs> kindergarten. So there, I do not think that we're going to have 215 plus 11 as total kindergarten enrollment based on the data that I shared. Now, we could be wrong, and we will know that as we monitor uh, enrollment throughout the summer. Okay, so and if we... If we have that position now versus August, you'll be taking the money from. Oh, more than likely, we will reduce operations. That this board, in my eight years, you asked me to hire a sixth grade teacher after the budget, and we subtracted it from operations and maintenance. That's where we got the money from. So we will just do that again.
And we'll we'll come back to that. Back to that. And you know what, before we continue, yeah, we can sure. certainly, if you're a student, <laughs> yeah, come you on have, up uh, and have driving restrictions, come on up and we'll sign your agenda for you. Don't have driving restrictions. You can go to anyone if you need something signed, anyone you can come to. Uh, uh, uh,
one 42 passenger bus with the rear lift, and then two Ford 350s, uh, four by fours for power trucks. And then the uh, slide 21 is the draft budget recap and fund balance. That's where we see the anticipated fund balance going uh, through the end of the year with uh, $7,446,732 uh, being allocated for next year's budget. So this is the final meeting for budget adoption. Questions? So, did we make any changes to the expenses besides just adding for the uh, contracts? Did we reduce anything? Did we look at our other expenses? I, I did look at uh, a lot of the other expenses. I, I went through those very carefully, and um, you know, said, there's a lot of uh, things in there to support the program, but most of those things have not increased in several years. Um, really, the, the most notable changes in those are the additional equipment funds that I requested for this year. Um, other than that, most of those lines really have not changed much um, over the last few years, and everything's gotten more expensive, so we're really doing more with less already. So. Uh, can we go through there, there and cut some stuff? Absolutely. Would I recommend it? Not necessarily, because we're already doing more with less, and the more we keep doing that, the less and less that our teachers are going to have to, to uh, do what they need to do in the classrooms. The increase in, it looks like the fund balance has increased the right. over $2 million. Do we, can that be used to fund a position? But yeah, the, I mean, the fund balance can be used for anything. So, you know, if, if, you, if the board decided to, you know, add, add the position right now, we could increase the, the budget by about $100,000. That's what it costs um, for a new teacher. A new teacher is about $50,000 uh, for master's step one. Um, and then the outcome plan is about $32,000, 10% for the TRS, like a 7.65%. So, a, an additional teacher would be about $100,000, so. So you're not going to get it out of our $5,000 board budget? <laughs> Good point. So, Shucks, I thought we were going to make it with that. So, so I'm, I'm yeah. we, we could increase no, this number by $100,000. Yes. And everything, and we have not, right? Like, when we sit here, you know, dictating to the district, and, and we don't prim at all. So I was just putting I think it would be there. more important for us to attend more events then. Well, I Because I think our education is, is detrimental to being I, good for I was just saying, even, even a couple thousand dollars, we give nothing back to the budget. We've, in, in all the years I have sat here at this table, we have not given one dollar back to the budget. And I thought this year maybe we could give a thousand or two, right? I'm not saying giving it all back, but clearly we're not willing to give back to the budget still. I just offering it up on the table. I wasn't I wasn't saying ten thousand or five thousand. I thought we, we did thirteen thousand um our caveats during that was well that was because they used to only cost six hundred but under our their last superintendent she made us wear all of our colors yeah. and stuff. We only and it, well because they went from six hundred to thousand it's right we went over budget that's why we were made so we went over budget that worked but anyways, that's all I was saying. I just was trying to offer something where I have not seen much of that before. That's all. Again, too, I, I just want to reinforce the idea. I'm just still trying to figure out how we balance the budget. So, <laughs> so, that's the question I have. Um, I remember getting a little bit more information. So, for instance, I'm looking at, you know, our last budget presentation, and it shows you know, the working draft budget was in premises and it shows a deficit. How did we, how did we balance, because last time they were negative, you know, 2.6 million. Like, what, what did we take out, or, or did we take out what was in red here? Because normally we'll get that with this to show us, you know, really what was removed to get us to balance. Yeah. Like right now, I don't see what was taken out to get us to that zero mark, and normally 
So the, the balance, the, the budget is typically balanced by the appropriated fund balance. So whatever you don't get in revenues, yeah. you would balance with the appropriated fund balance. So, so this year, last year, we took, let's say, $5 million, and this year we're at 7.5. Correct. So an increase of $2.5 Correct. So at that rate, what is our fund balance going to look like in the next five years? Yeah, it's going to be gone in the next five years. So I think you're going to really need to look at that because we're not going to be able to sustain this right? So where we're saying, okay, great, we're going to take it from our appropriated fund balance. Once we take the 7.5, what is our balance going to be going into next quarter? Okay, I wasn't sure. So, you know, we, if you look at... I mean, what's sitting in our, our fund balance? I mean, it's easy to say, yeah, so we can take it, but at, at a rate of $7.5 million a year, so it did increase over two million this year. Yeah, so correct. Yes. So here. Well, so so a couple points to that. So if you look on page twenty one, that's uh, where our fund balance is. So if you look at fund balance as of March first, twenty twenty four. So uh, so far we have not had to use any of it for this year. So our current fund balance is about seventeen million dollars or seventeen point four. Um, we do anticipate having a little fund balance at the end of this year. And so, um, you know, if our numbers all come out, we would end up with almost $20 million in our fund balance. And as of right now, with the numbers the way they are, we're projecting to use seven and a half million of that for next year's budget. Um, you know, a lot of the fund balance that we've gained over the last few years have been from COVID money, and you know, the COVID money is not going to be there after this year. Um, so. The, uh, the other, yeah, and the, and the other point that I wanted to make is, you know, our, our budget's projected to go up by about four million dollars, and with the state aid, with no additional state aid, you know, that's almost half of where we get our revenue from. So, all of our expenses increase. You know, health insurance goes up ten percent, TRS goes up, ERS, all of our expenses increase, and state aid, where we get half of our revenue from, is right now as we see it today. Is negative. I'm not so, saying that I don't understand it. Yeah. I'm just saying we're looking at these other districts that are running into these issues with the COVID money running out. We need to make sure that with with the situation that sure. that we bring it to light. Right? Well, it's we easy. might not be in that position this year. Very distinctly. Right. Like yes. right. 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 With, with the COVID money not coming oh. in, and us, we're going to start thinking it. You know, and okay, this year we didn't use it, but if we use it at 7.5 million this year, there's 21, we're looking at three years, and then we have, and we have a problem. And we don't want to be where these other districts are. We don't want to be, you know, laying off teachers and, and all of that, because we have worked really, really hard to maintain our education, our class sizes, right? All of our programs, all of our everything. And so where we say, oh, we'll just take that out of our, appropriate fund balance, it's, it, I'm just bringing it to light. I'm not yeah, saying you shouldn't, I'm just putting it on the table. I and probably should have noticed what is the appropriate fund balance for a district of our size. Can't be more than 4%. They can't be more than 4%. Well, we, we are at 4% of the total budget. Correct. 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 Yeah. 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 Which yeah. is really great. We do really well. So we're not, so, and that's, this is a great question because the governor thinks that we're hanging on to all sorts of money and she has said that multiple times less enrollment for bigger fund balances there may be some districts that are doing that not us no. okay comes up and on every year right so to that end there are you know fun you can talk about the reserves and that are restricted and then there are some that are unrestricted well those other like, districts that really hurt us right the ones that weren't using it appropriately so then you put this restriction on yeah. everybody so then we can't really yeah yeah, so uh, if you look back at the property tax report card that, that we looked at earlier, uh, that'll actually show uh, the 4% is referring to the uh, unappropriated fund balance, their unassigned fund balance. So there's different buckets, uh, and, and cer certain buckets are restricted, cer certain ones are unrestricted, but then there's an unassigned. So most of those buckets are assigned for a specific purpose. There's, uh, yeah, correct. There's the capital one, which goes for future capital projects. 
There's the debt service reserve, which goes towards paying off uh, past capital projects. The employee benefits uh, goes towards uh, various different benefits. There's ERS, uh, TRS. We don't have any money in the TRS uh, as of right now. Um, but then there's the unemployment insurance. So most of those things are designed uh, for a specific purpose. The 4% is that last number on the bottom, the unassigned, which is uh, currently, you know, we projected to be at the 4%, 3.112450 uh, at the end of this year. It's also important for the board to know that we do expect that the safe harmless provision will give us back 159000 so if the board is willing to allow us to watch kindergarten enrollment numbers, and we do see foundation aid increasing by 159,000, that could also be a place where we use that money to help uh, fund. When would you know if we had that money? Oh, you know? Probably a week. It could be this week. We're just waiting for the school aid funds to, to flow. The, the budget was due April 1st, so. We believe the money's coming. <laughs> so, and I know you so it should have been needed. And then you don't know what that 2.8% is that we were to get. It. Can you speculate? Is that $50,000? <laughs> yeah. we, we have to look at the entire formula yeah. to understand how that 2.4 to 2.8 changes. Yeah. But, and, and it may also, sorry, Bob, it, and this is just my understanding, please correct me. The safe harmless may be the only money because uh, other districts who didn't have safe harmless might get that additional bump in CPI, but that's just a, an idea. Yeah, based on the uh, formula currently enacted in law, CPI should be set at 4.1. That's, yes. that's what that's should be included in the formula. But the governor's proposal changed that to 2.4 and now they're trying to get that, that rumors are it's really you know, around 2.8, which would be, you know, yeah. I'm not sure exactly, I have to look at the entire formula, but it would be No, I was just wondering what the yeah. part of what that would potentially be. The recommendation to wait is not something that is, uh, you know, uh, horrible for sibling, right? We, we need, as a district, to maintain the opportunity to subtract through attrition. So, you know, Sue and others have asked the question, you know, we cannot sustain putting $7 million into the budget from fund balance every year for the next few years. But what we can do is subtract through attrition. We can have a retirement incentive if, if approved by the board to allow people to leave when they're ready. Uh, we can, you'll have a presentation in May of a big initiative to do more with solar here in Grand Island. And we think that will net savings if if the board agrees and we move forward with that. We think we will have significant savings uh, yearly for about 20 or 25 years. We are also uh, asking, uh, working with the teachers to look at pharmacy benefits and to see whether or not there are other options out there than independent health only that would net uh, savings for the district. So we are, Bob and I and our team, are focused on looking for ways to reduce expenses, looking for ways perhaps to increase revenues, always advocating with, with the state. Uh, and you know, it, it is disappointing for our governor to be acting the way she is in this, in this light. So I know that the education community, NYSA, uh, administrators, NISCUS, we're all going to be pushing back for multiple years to get the aid that we, as Bob has eloquently said, has been so underfunded and continues to be. So those, you know, that is the reality. That's that's where we are. We're going to be working really hard to uh, create savings and to generate revenue where we can. So I do think, again, going back to kindergarten, let's wait. We, we can't just continue to add teachers and add personnel and add administrators over and over and over again. We need to at least be cautious, look for opportunities for attrition, and then act when we can. And if, if and we will come to you. We always have. And we always have said, hey, this is the time to add that teacher. And we will do that again if needed. I have a question. So for is there a way that we could capture the number of budget kills corners like the like now, like those kids that are not enrolled in pre-K, but to find out, 
know there's 10 kids that hit over the corner. Is there a way we can and honestly, what I've shown you is the way. It's the birth data. It is the effect, the multiple, the multiplier that compares birth data to enrollment, and then that's exactly what we do yeah, every year. I was just year. curious if they make a telephone call, you know, find yeah. out there's another yeah, I'm just yeah. curious. But, I mean, but we we know that they're going to enroll, right? But if they're not enrolled, in, there could be kids at those schools that are not yeah. enrolled in the Of course, but. Minimally, we have 135 kids for UBK from Grand Island attending all of our UBK programs. So let's say there's another 70 or 60 kids. That, that'll put us around 200, right? I mean, that's exactly, we, we know that those other kids will enroll. We just want time. We're asking the board for time. That's all. I do, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put on the table. We, this board directed me to keep a teacher at sixth grade who was elementary certified, who could have gone down to an elementary building and filled this position. But the board said, no, we're going to keep that teacher in sixth grade, and that's what we did, right? So when we make recommendations to subtract your attrition and to perhaps move based on class sizes, remember, sixth grade will have class sizes of 20, right? And they have class sizes of 24 right now. We could have easily moved a teacher to cover that vacancy, but now we can't. So we are going to ask for us to give us the time, let's study the enrollment, and we'll come right back to you and tell you we need another teacher or we don't. Said August first as our as our target date. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, in fact, uh, Mr. Laurie and I and uh, Amy put together the new teacher academy. I present. Ashley has spoken. We that's later in August, right? So there's definitely time to hire, and we've done it in the past. <coughs> Could we hire? Sooner than August, if we have the uh, foundation aid restored, if the $159,000 in foundation aid is restored, could we do it? Or yeah, the numbers, but. We wait on the number. If the number tells us July 1st, then. Yeah, the board has the power to direct me to add personnel. So uh, you can, like you've done in the past, we will do it. If you tell me to do it, we will do it. We'll cut from some other area, but we'll do it. I'm just asking, let's wait. That's all. Let's wait for the numbers. And I will, I will report to the board with you at every meeting. We'll let you know what those numbers are and any emails to the board. We'll let you know each week what the enrollment is. Where would it come now? Well, there's two options. We think we're going to get the money through Safe Harmless, which would add 159000 to our foundation aid. That's an easy add. Right. We can also cut from operations. We've done that in the past. We've cut uh, equipment. We've cut all sorts of areas to hire a teacher when we have, have had to. We'll, we'll need to cut someplace. Mm -hmm. we'll to start so are you to get more money because the budget works. But right, right. Right. Yes, sir. So I think just to be clear, there's no way not to cut right now if we don't, if, say, we don't receive that additional money. There, yeah. Yes, we could. Yeah, if the board directs me, we will add the teacher and we will make those cuts. That's what I'm saying. That's the situation we have to be cut from somewhere else. Yes. Without the 156,000. It's 159. Uh, I think we. It, that would basically go into fund balance. We, we, we are approving a budget. The amount of dollars we spend. Yes. The various lines in the budget. Right. Okay. So if we get more revenues, it doesn't change the amount of the budget. And all it does is it means that we have to move. We have we don't have to use appropriate fund balance or other reserves. Yeah. Okay. 
So yeah, the, the getting the 159, et cetera, will be helpful because we'll have more downs and more back things will come down, which is good. But if we want to hire this position, we need to move something in the budget behind it around. Either by taking out of operations or something else. Well, right. we don't have that 159 in the budget, do we? Well, it's not in food and revenues. Right. Okay, we, uh, we adopt the budget of expenditures. That's what we're, 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 we're doing today. And what we have is a line item of any expenditure that's budgeted. Okay? Right. If we change anything in that line at any point in time, take it from operations and put it into salaries, we can make that determination in the future. Right, but we wouldn't have to cut anything because we're not spending that one hundred and fifty nine thousand dollars in this budget. We don't have it appropriated. It's it's it's, it's, it's you're, you're mixing up the revenue piece, which is where the one fifty nine is, right. and the expenditure piece, which is the budget. That we're it just won't come down. It just right. would not come out of the fund balance. We don't have it. Right. But it wouldn't come out of our operations. It would, yes. It would have to, would come, to come from for sure. We're approving the seven seven million. That's all. We're approving a budget of expenditure. Okay, and, and lines in those expenditures. So, so basically, the seventy-seven million nine hundred thirty-two thousand two hundred fifty-four. That is the maximum amount we'd be allowed to spend next year. Correct. Um, the revenues we don't really have as much control over. You know, uh, sales tax, for example. State aid, we, we know what it's going to be. Um, you know, theoretically, but obviously there's some adjustments coming. Um, the uh, property tax, we know what that's going to be. Um, we've set that. But the other revenues, we don't know what they're going to be. There's interest revenues. There's uh, sales tax revenues. Those revenues, we, we do the best that we can based on past trends to predict those revenues. Uh, but whatever the revenues come up short is what we fill the gap with appropriated funding. So um, as of right now, we have about a seven and a half million dollar gap in what we project our expenses to be, expenses to be, and what where our uh, revenues are projected to be. So if we get an additional 159,000 for uh, state aid, that would be additional on the revenue side and would decrease the amount of appropriated fund balance that would need to be used to close that gap uh, between the revenues and the expenses. I also think it's important that that everybody understands that we, they are all saying the same thing. Right? We don't want the kindergarten class size or too big, too big. We're just not, some of us are saying, not today, let's wait, right? So we are all in agreement, and I think, I think Brian brings up a valid point. We all sat here and saved that sixth grade teacher, right? So now the same board is sitting here, and we are now kind of in the consequences of our decision, right? So we, you know, we, Conscience of what our what some of our decisions make, we, we we should hold and wait, right? We're not saying no. When July first, we could be sitting here going, "Whoo, yep, we're at two fifteen, we're at two twenty, we're at, we're at three hundred. We need two, we need three, right? Like exactly correct. We're we're at one fifty and we're holding, and now what do we do, right? Like so, it's we're all saying the same thing. Nobody wants big class sizes. This board has been committed to small class sizes since I have sat at this table, right? So I think there's a lot of valid points that have been made and, and we have always trusted the, the system, right? And I, you know, I, I don't know. So I, I am fine with, with and I, I know Glenn and Jay have said the same thing, so. Okay, any other thoughts? I guess at the end of the day, it's just basically waiting so long makes it difficult on teachers, obviously. And lower class sizes obviously are the best solution. So, um, you know, it, it, it makes you know, classes run much, much smoother, especially with, with kids. And I have friends who are teachers who have much larger class sizes, and it's incredibly difficult to, to take care of them. So it's, it's, it's just, you know, waiting and the class size is being bigger because even if it's 20.9, I don't even know how this changes, but, and you're like, oh, well, hold, you know, it's going to make the class sizes bigger for them regardless, right? So 
you know, they're seeing 18.7 million. This is where we should be. This would be the most acceptable, obviously, and best solution for all teachers is to have, you know, and and to have that yeah, teacher early enough. Right. It could be 180. It could be And then obviously it's making it sure that we're being fiscally responsible at the same time, right? So it's difficult. I think that the decision should be made sooner. I think August 1st is late. Um, I think that, like you said, we should know, you know, what's going on um, as soon as possible so that they can have better time to prepare. Um, put them at ease as well to know that their class sizes are not going to be huge um, and it be last minute. So I think that, I think August 1st is, is a really late date and the goal would be to do a lot sooner. Because our first date is September 1st yeah, yeah. 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 So, what has been the trend when you look at the adapted numbers versus the actual numbers? Just the class sizes are right there. Yeah. So that's you know, like what was when you gave us the live works during the budget mm -hmm. years yeah. versus what is what fi the final numbers? I, I, what is the difference? I, I might need to ask Mike Antonelli, but I believe that we projected high for this school year and we came in at 18.7. So I believe the number was higher. You might have it, you might have it in your handout from last year. So for prior years, we've always projected higher and the moment has come in. Either on par, you know, or lower or higher, right? And as you can see there, you know, it's right here, right? Sometimes kindergarten had had in 2014 had almost 22 kids, but then 17, 18, 19 kids, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I'm just, I'm trying to remember like the projected live births scenario versus the actual. It might be, it might be in last year's uh, presentation. If we have another teacher, then next year we Right? So, I mean, it's, it's, I certainly understand the transactions both, but, you know, it's, it's... It fluctuates. It, it absolutely does. And I think um, our high school, we, a few years ago, we reduced a science teacher. I believe it was two years ago, maybe. Right? And now we're, we're adding because the course requests are there. And um, the program is very powerful and very... You know, very attractive to students, so we're adding that science teacher. And we had eliminated that science teacher years ago. So the board has been gracious and wonderful in following those uh, recommendations. When when it was time to subtract the attrition, we did. And we had savings for a few years. Now we're adding that position back. Uh, the same is true for here. If if the board allows me uh, to monitor this, uh, and we do add it. It's not going, it's, there, there really isn't a, a negative side, except, remember, as I think Glenn is saying, we would be adding a teacher for the next 30 years to the budget, right? Unless others retire and we subtract it to attrition. But I, I have to say that this board will have to be with us when we make recommendations to subtract to attrition, because as others have said around the table, we just can't keep using uh, millions and millions of dollars from our bill. So I just, as long as the board is committed to that and those recommendations, then we will be able to do do good by the taxpayers and have the appropriate class sizes, the appropriate programs for our kids. But in some cases, we will subtract to attrition in the future. That's just the only way to get at it, unless we're going to be laying off. And that's where other districts are right now. They haven't been subtracting to attrition. And now they're playing off in West Seneca, they think upwards of 30, ish, 47, right? So I just am asking for the board's grace and allowing us to wait. I definitely don't want to be in that position. Actually, actually, I don't know if you want to take a roll call. Maybe if I don't say Did you, Brian, did you want me to take a roll call on waiting until August? Not for the budget, but 
maybe we adopt the budget and then we talk about if you want me to immediately add a teacher or wait. Well, I think we've got to do that first. I, I think we got to do that before we adopt the budget because okay. we're adopting the budget at some time to do it. Okay, so we can do a roll call then for waiting till August versus. It could also be late July. Yeah. It, it'll, the numbers will dictate what we do. So if the board directs me to add the position, we will cut $100,000 out of operations and or the small capital outlay. You know, there, that would be probably, you know, Bob and I will meet. We will subtract 100000 from other areas if you direct me to hire uh, a kindergarten teacher tonight. Again, I'm asking for you to wait. That's all. Let's wait and look at the numbers. It's April 16th. It's April 16th. Numbers come out that way. So, 
the forest there and this ocean. So you're saying you need to make cuts if we receive the 159,000, or we would not because we could use that? Because we're going to be voting on the budget today. Mm -hmm. So we'll know what our expenditures are. When so, do we expect to hear about the 159,000? And you said within a week, you think? Possibly. So our, our absolute drop that day to adopt the budget, I think it's next Thursday, I want to say, if we well, were we to wait. But yeah, the, we would change what we're appropriating from the fund balance. Right, to be more responsible, right? I mean, that's a responsible thing to do, right? So we're taking, like, we need to, like, I, you know, it's easy to say, but if we get that money back from, from the government, we need to take less from our fund balance. Like, that's the responsible thing to do. We are still going to have to cut. Like, it's easy to say, yes, we'll take it from that 150, but what we need to do is be responsible to our community and to our taxpayers and say, we're going to, keep our money in our fund balance and we're, we're going to take it from a, our budget operations, right? Instead of saying, that's all right, guys, three years, like, we have to be responsible with our money. So regardless if we get that $160,000 back, if we keep that teaching, that money is going to come from our operational money, right? So we need to realize that. It's not going to come from the money that the government is going to give, come back to us. We're going to be responsible and use that money and keep money in our fund balance. Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, that would be the responsible thing to do. We would still have the same in the fund balance that we have today if the $159,000 was restored, however, the, the correct? Point that I'd like so to we'd make, still be responsible with that. So the point I'd like to make is that even if that uh, if that's restored, that $159,000, that's on the revenue side. So even if that was restored, we could not increase our expenses. You know, if we were to approve that number tonight, we can't add that onto the expenditure. So whatever that approved expenditure number is, is what it is, no matter what our revenues end up being. So, um, you know, if we do get that back, it would decrease the amount of appropriated fund balance. But if we do get it back at a later date, we can't just add on the expenses. And that's, so that's exactly what we've done together for eight years. Mm -hmm. we've, we've made it's those decisions. Mm -hmm. And Bob, I thought you said that really well. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's it's all great. I'm asking. Let's, great, great, great. If we could, let's just wait. It doesn't hurt anything. It goes into the fund balance. That's correct. That's correct. So, uh, Dr. Graham, do you want us to vote on the budget with? Um, restoring that position or um, yeah, my recommendation is not to do anything okay, with that position but we will we will add the position and cut from operations if if we need that position in late July Yeah, I, I think you're going to look at the numbers carefully. I will communicate with the board. Mr. Antonelli will put out an anticipated vote for uh, vacancy, and we will move from there. And we've done this in the past. So we have two options. We can vote on the budget with keeping the position as it is right now. We can vote on the budget with uh, maintaining. Actually, my, my recommendation would be to cut from operations if you tell me to add a teacher today. And we would we would all vote on the number that Bob has presented. And cut from operations. So either way, we're cutting from operations. If we have to add a teacher. And that's why it's good to wait and look at the numbers. I know it's April 16th, everybody. So and, and, and we can do that at any point. We could do it at any point in time, absolutely. There's, there's been a time where I've come to this board in my eight years and asked to add a special education teacher mid-year, and you've allowed me to do that. So we, we know that this board will work with us to make sure it's best for our kids. It's just, it's just early right now. 
And it, this will always be the case for kindergarten. Always. It'll always be too early to add if we don't have to. So that's all I'm asking. It's April 16th. You got May 16th. You got June 16th. Right? In three months, I might come back and say, yeah, yeah, we, we, we need to add that teacher. Okay, so we are voting on the budget as is without cutting from operations and adding a teacher or we're voting on the budget well, we just with adding around, the so, teacher, yeah? So us three made the decision, so now you guys just have to change what, what, what you're going to do. Is it, is it, are we voting on the budget as is or are we adding a teacher? So it'll be you four that way. I'm going to before, as is, hit the second seven million, five, whatever, set to as is without any changes. And we'll put that up for a vote if you'd like to, or someone wants to second. Or it's um, as is with. Well, we'll oh, make, we'll make one vote, and then that's the vote down, then we'll do another one. All right, so this vote will be voting for the budget as is without adding the position. I'm sorry, I'm right. I'm You've seconded that. So I'll vote in favor of that. I'll vote in favor of that. I will not vote in favor of that. Okay, I will not vote in favor of that. I'm in favor. Okay, so I'll make a motion to uh, vote on the budget with um, with keeping a kindergarten position um, and cutting expenditures through the budget. Okay. So should we vote now on the budget? Yes. Right. Well, we just vote on the budget. We vote on the budget. Yeah. Yes. But then we have changes. With the changes. Right. And I will accept. The first thing, I just for the board, we'll probably look at small capital outlay, which is a hundred thousand dollars, or or a combination of things. That's how we'll pay for it. And the capital outlay is. Well, the, the capital outlay probably is not going to be an option because that's a multi-year plan. Thank you. Uh, the door hardware. So, but um, okay. most likely, you yeah. know, we added some equipment right. dollars for this year, so that would probably okay. be part of it. Um, probably. Yeah, I mean, don't think I, yeah, I agree. So I think maybe we need to. I think we need to set another budget meeting to find out what we're going to cut. Okay. So when do we have to have a, when, when is the vote budget to be voted on and let's get our calendars out? Uh, I believe next Thursday is the final day. It might be. It might be. It might be. Reception at 6:30. So. Does Monday still give us? I know Daniel needs to do a conference Monday. Monday night is an ideal, but I can make it work. I just don't know if it's going to be. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yes, we have all Thursday, Friday. Yes, we do four or five. That, that okay, and before five. It doesn't work. Okay. How's Friday the 19th? Okay, so back to the 18th. So the, the 24th day. I'm not comfortable not knowing something. But we can still take a Sunday Sunday. Yeah, we do. I, I would like to know what's being cut. Um, the 24th, would that work? That's a two Does it have to be the 22nd? According to this uh, NISBA, Publication it says the 24th day before the budget poll vote falls on Saturday, April 22nd. So I think as long as we do it before Saturday. Saturday. So anytime the week of April 22nd, does anyone have a date We have that week. Um, Bob just told us that, uh, Dr. Merkel just told us that NISBA publication, the New York State School Boards Association publication. Uh, indicates that Saturday, April 27th, is the deadline. Tuesday or Wednesday? I agree. I, now that I'm looking at this, this is, I think that's the property tax report. So 4 p.m. on Thursday the 18th, the, uh, if members have to uh, zoom in, can we zoom in based on, we could probably do something like how we did it with COVID. Oh, okay. Where we are. Okay. <coughs> Glenn, um, how is Thursday the 18th at 4? Zoom. Sorry. Okay, so 4 is work now. Unless you're okay for a Okay, so let's let's add Ju let's have Ju let's give them some time. Let's give yeah. give Dr. Merkel a couple yeah. days we to also have GA and negotiate right, right, right. right. So four PM Thursday the eighteenth, do we have enough of a consensus that will work for everyone? And if you'd like to um, do the Google Meet should send a, send you the address, email you the address of where you will be. Or you can't physically. So district office conference room, if you cannot physically make it there, please email you the address where you will be uh, meeting from.
So that brings us to special education with Cheryl. Uh, on the agenda, there are CPSC and CSC program recommendations. Please, if I could hear action on those tonight. Okay, we can have a motion for A and B, please. I'll and a second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried 7 0. Thank you. Yep. And it looks like under policy, we have a first read. Yep, so um, I'm going to tag team this um, a little bit with uh, Mike Warria, but um, it is our workplace violence um, policy. Uh, it is a first read. I just want to let everybody know that even though it's a first read, this will be a fluid document. Um, we'll be working on it from now until uh, September board meeting. We will bring back the completed document, um, hopefully at the first board meeting in September. Um, but just to let you know that this is a policy that we have to have. There are deadlines. Um, one of the first deadlines is actually having an adopted policy in May, which we will meet that um, deadline with the second read. But again, just a reminder, it will be um, a fluid document. It needs many stakeholders um, to implement this policy, so that's what we're working on. Um, I will tell you that um, John Fitzpatrick provided some information that all employees have been required to complete a workplace violence training video. That was done in September 2023, so good for us that we are a little bit ahead of that. Um, just a reminder, too, that the mandate is regarding workplace violence issues and not for reporting workplace accident issues. Okay? Um, we also have to select at that main work meeting a workplace violence prevention coordinator uh, like Gloria uh, will be uh, recommended or, or for that title. And I know that Mike and Gloria and John are meeting with um, several of the stakeholders this week to help us roll out this policy. So, like Gloria, we'll have to meet with you next week. Yeah. I'll, I'll just say quickly that one of the board's roles is to help them establish a policy. This is a unique situation in which we do have to give stakeholder feedback, so we're asking you to, next meeting, adopt a policy as we're, we're, kind of, as we're working with our stakeholder groups to adopt and change anything that we need to do with that, then bring back the final policy to you so that we can have it in place as soon as possible. Uh, again, workplace violence is, you know, it, it's any time you're pulling it's very at work. Um, by the lack of something that's intentional, not something that's unintentional, that would be um, in the workers' comp. So it does work closely with workers' comp, and we'll be evaluating the reports periodically throughout the years in the future. There's a specific form, just like with NASA, which Cheryl coordinates. Um, if there's an incident, they can perform these reports to me. We work to figure out whether it was intentional or not, meets the criteria, and at the end of it all, we have to report that to the state. So it's a new thing. It was at a public school, so it's been in the past. Now we're not accepted. Okay, thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Okay. That brings us to the superintendent's report with Dr. Graham. Thank you for the interesting time. I will just allow you to watch, uh, look at the PDFs uh, that are in your board docs to review the superintendent report, just in the interest of time. But if you have any questions, I, I can answer them. And it's all about celebrations and the French trip and Josh Allen jumping over the solar eclipse. Like <laughs> but uh, please look at, at the slides. And of course, uh, as the board knows, we're doing something incredibly special for our school-related uh, professionals. And we're having a distinguished uh, award ceremony and dinner coming up at Alpine. So all that information is in the back. That's great. Oh, can we see the slide? I don't know if we can bring it up of our SRP nominees for our, actually not even our nominees, they were selected at our last committee meeting, so they'll be honored at Aldean's. I just want to highlight that. And we also have Len, who is receiving an award as well, so I wanted to just highlight that. So we have um, the following SRPs being, um, being honored. I don't know if we want to go through the names really quick. Sure. Yeah, we're very uh, 
fortunate to have amazing SRPs, and there were well over 100 plus nominations from students, parents, uh, teachers, administrators, and board members uh, submitted nominations. So you can see here, uh, John Fruzlone, Donnie, Sue, Vicki, Kathy, amazing people being nominated in their categories. Uh, we have Jasmine and Rick and Joe and Steve, Tom, Tracy, Caroline, Mark, and Rob. So that'll be uh, that, and I'll put this in the next, in May 13th, too, just to remind the board. And I just want to congratulate Glenn. I don't know if we can go to that slide really quick as well on his award. So, yeah, that's Glenn. There he is. So, the Western New York Education Service Council is honoring Glenn at a dinner. I'm very excited to be attending that. That is coming up on Wednesday the 24th. And also Mr. Sweeney and Mr. Santorio, very deserving educators being honored for uh, their, their teacher leadership, Glenn for board leadership, and uh, Dan Sweeney and Dean Santorio for teacher leadership. So congratulations to them. Thank you. Sure. Um, okay, so that brings us to the Board of Education report, and I have the community, I know, Sue, you wanted to speak about your report? Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm putting my reading glasses on. Hold on. There you go. Yeah. Oh, the trustee vote. Two seats yeah. and two people. Two seats and two people for a motion for uh, the Erie 1 BOCES budget and trustee vote under the Board of Education report. That's item A. So it is... Um, a motion to approve the Board of Education items A and B. And a second. All in favor? Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried 7 0. Um, I have a community education liaison report, um, which I will have you um, review uh, when you have a moment. We have a couple of new courses. Um, we have an iPhone um, photography and editing course that's new, and there's a couple other ones on there as well that you can review. Uh, the financials are all included uh, for the community ad, additionally, for your review. So, Sue Gisba. Uh, everybody knows my dates. Yeah. The car show. I'm looking forward to it. That should be a great event. So I hope everybody can come out to the car for the car show. Um, and I would like, if it's okay with the board, to roll over the um, item E, the student activity assistance funds to the next board meeting. If that's okay for everyone in the interest of time. And that will bring us to committee of the whole items information for the roundtable. Begin with one. Oh, sorry. Public comment session. We did not have anyone sign up for. Sorry. Public comment session general and is not included in this agenda. We did not have anyone sign up for that. So that brings us to committee of the whole beginning with Glenn. I'm Sherry, Sherry? Just congrats to all the athletes for winning the game. Yep, thanks. Yep, ditto. Congratulations to all of our athletes. And congratulations to our teachers and uh, Glenn and all our SRPs that will be honored at Aldine's. Looking forward to that. Alden, sorry, Alden. Yep. Yeah. I like all these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. so fancy, right? I'm tired and it's so late. Sitting <laughs> up. All set. All set. Okay. Thank you. Uh, to show people the view of uh, the solar works <coughs> from West River Road. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, with that, I would like to ask for a motion to adjourn at 951 p.m. And a second. All in favor? Aye. Any objections? No <coughs> any objections to that. Have a good night, everyone. Motion carried 7-0.